Okay, good morning. All right, we're gonna have us a seat and get comfortable so we can do some more plants here. I have got a green bell pepper. That makes real tasty. You cook with that, you can eat it in a salad. Really, really good. Then we got banana peppers. I got these at Louisiana Nursery. Good people, you gotta go and see them. If you in Louisiana, they got stores all over the place. Celebrity tomato. Excellent tomato plant. They got, here's one of them I haven't tried yet. Called, hold on, get some glasses. Parks Whopper. Now, I don't know what that's supposed to be, but Parks Whopper is what they call it. And this one people probably have heard of is a big boy tomato. So that's another one we have. So I want to show you these plants. Now I planted some tomatoes earlier. Now I'm going to put these bell peppers in and show you how to do that. It's all the same. You pinch the bottom and you get this loose. I typically go after the biggest plant they got. Get them out the way. There we go. Here he is. Some pretty roots right there. See that? That's ready. You bob it up and down. You expose the roots. Hopefully I'm not already. Look at that. Vegetables grow quick. The roots expand really, really quick. Here we go. That's going in this little neck pot. Put some hydrotin in it. We get out of here. So I don't have to reach it far. There we go. We got us a little routine going on. Bell pepper. Nice. Good. Here we go. Look at a bell pepper plant. That's what we got. Now look, this is a, a kitty litter. Talk about recycling. Cat litter. I take and drill a hole in it. Look how it fits. Just like that. The water level is going to be right there. Okay. The roots are going to start busting out of here. And the water level, as it drops, the roots are going to start heading for that water. I'm going to use what's called the Kratke method. You can see it on YouTube. This is going to be a demonstration about it. And what it does is you want to have air for your roots. Um, you don't want to drown your plant. If I put it up to here, that plant's going to drown. It, it's got to have oxygen in the roots. So what happens is you've got oxygen in the roots right here. And if I put some water right there, you're going to have enough oxygen to keep your plant alive. Now when them roots start heading down, it creates a gap right there and it gives you more oxygen. They used to use just an aerator is what they would do to oxygenate the water. But what they found was this technique works almost as good. I wouldn't say better, but this is how it's done. I'm gonna set this little guy right here. There we go. And if I need to add water, I can add water to it. I keep my peppers grow very well in this. When your water level gets down to whatever spot it is, you just want to put enough uh, to cover the roots. You don't want to add too much water to, uh, to drown your roots. Okay, here we go. Big plant again. Bell peppers. All right. I'm going to put that tag right there. Everybody knows what's going on. Same routine with this guy. Bell peppers. Ease him out of there. Knock, the, knock the, the material off of this right here. Here we go, here we go. This type of pot and saw is typically used for rooting the plant. It's got more peat moss, more perlite, and stuff like that. I'm gonna keep washing it off. Here we go. Right in here. High rotten rocks. You can get this at Vernon's Hardware on Florida Boulevard. You can ask to talk to Tommy. Tommy's a nice guy, a real nice guy. Good godly man. So, here we go. That's where I got this from, Mr. Tommy. I got the cups from him. I got 
the hydrotin from him, but I got the plants from Louisiana Nursery. That's it. It don't have to be centered to the plant. It don't care too much about it. So here we go. Here's another one right there. Some more to go. We'll go for the big plant again. Making this look easy because it's easy. All right. And well, you could sit down and do this because I was standing up and I was not comfortable. Get a seat, take your time, do a couple, take a break, do a couple more. I collect rainwater. 100% rainwater is what I use. The pH is always right in rainwater. You can't go wrong. If you got God watering your plants, he's going to do a good job, let me tell you. So the pH is going to be typically right on the money. Um, in terms of filtering it, I might take, if it's clear, it's good. If I let some leaves get in it, I might take a towel and just pour it through the towel. That's the extent of all the filtering I do. There we go. Bell pepper. Set that guy right here. Man, it looks like a two bell pepper, but I don't know if that's gonna work out. We're gonna try it. Okay, two. Man, that thing jumped right in the water. Committing suicide on me. That's all right. There we go. Look at here. Do I have two plants? One plant or one dead plant? at that. Come on, guy. Come apart. All right. I got two plants. A full pack is a five pack today. Once again, we call that lanyard. That's a Louisiana term. Anybody from Louisiana knows what it means. A little bit extra. There we go. Fill that guy up. if I could be gentle with these plants. But they they survive. All this rough stuff I do to them, they make it. They come back the next day. Happy to see me. Okay. You stay going. You saw the technique. I use the same technique technique for tomato plants, for peppers. You could use it for strawberries, the same technique works over and over again. All kind of plants I use it. There we go. I got five plants out of there. So this is what we got. I'm going to do some other plants a little bit later. I'm going to go put these guys in these containers right here. Alright, I'm going to sign off. Talk to y'all later. Thank <laughs> you.